Welcome to Sacred Sessions, light-filled, uplifting and informative conversations for people on their spiritual path. Join me, Melissa Matthews. And me, Alison Filler here, each week as we openly share our personal experiences and wisdom on life, love and spirituality in the modern world. Hi everyone, I'm Alison from Let Love Bloom and I am really excited to be chatting again to the beautiful Melissa Matthews. Hi, how, how are you Melissa? Yeah, I'm pretty good Alison, pretty good. Glad to be back here together with you, chatting about wise things. <laughs> oh, it, it was, I really enjoyed the last, um, the responses that we've been getting from the feedback from people saying that they already enjoyed the first couple of chats and episodes that we've been sharing. And so just really excited to be chatting about some more great things today. So what have you got lined up? What are you thinking of? Because, you know, I just... Well, well, I really wanted to talk today about how to create and feel comfortable with creating healthy boundaries in your life. Um, I know this has just been such a huge topic for me to learn throughout my life, to even to know how to put out, have healthy boundaries with people. And then especially as I build my business, how I build my practice and even become more intuitive, having healthy boundaries, it just flows into everything with relationships, with your children, with friends, with business. And there's so much we could talk about today. What do you think? Look, I think I have to agree with you. I had, um, you know, I struggled a lot with boundaries because uh, we only know what we know. And, mm. and I found it particularly heightened when I started doing this work. You know, I came from an industry that um, we all knew what we were doing and we all understood where we were and, um, and we were all happy with that. So, you know, I did struggle with boundaries. Um, mm -hmm. when I started doing readings and even, um, you know, oversharing things like that, you know, and so I, I agree, it's really good to, to understand the boundaries. And, um, and I'm going to be pretty honest about some of the experiences that I had. So, you know, you can do it if you want to, because that's boundaries, Alison. <laughs> yes, well, I agree. I am probably at heart an oversharer. Mm -hmm. I am, I really just, what you see is what you get. And I am really struggle sometimes with people who don't, um, have better boundaries or have even too big a boundary. It's like, let me in, let me in. Yeah. Like, have, is, that, is that something that you've even experienced that sometimes people are so closed off and I'm like, let me in. <laughs> it's quite funny when people will come to me, like they, um, you know, they might come to me for a reading and I'm like, I'm not getting anything. I know I've got a connection, but what's happening? And I say, look, you, you've got to understand that, your boundaries are so much in place that nothing can get in and you've made it clear that you don't want anyone to see anything or experience anything and you're worried about it. So it's great that you know that and you can use that, but for the purpose of the reading, maybe it's, um, maybe it's a good idea just to say, yes, it's okay to let, to let, um, you know, Melissa as the reader know what she needs to know. She doesn't need to know everything. And that's how I like to approach life as well. You know, sometimes you go to have a coffee with someone, it's all very exciting. You get there and they're like, <laughs> they yeah. do, people do get worried because, yeah. of, because of my abilities. You know, they do get worried that I can see into their lives and I'm just not, I'm not really interested. I want to be a human. I want to have a cup of coffee and a cup of tea with you. And that's it. So, you know, so the, being, um, you know, being a reader and being known for it, you know, people do think that I can see into their lives. It's not, it's, it's not what I'm about. No. What about and, you? Well, it's funny. The whole boundary topic is, is just so overwhelming sometimes on, on both ways. Because even like I, I'm also someone who really respects people's boundaries. I'm, you know, even with a friend, like I'm not the one, if they don't want to share information with me, I'm not the kind of person who's going to be like, oh, you know, really at them. Or if I can feel or sense, you know, people are going through a tough time, I give them a lot of space and respect, you know, and sometimes that's to my detriment as well, because I think, oh, you know, I really should have just 
gone over there or just checked on them and things like that so it's like I can't ever get it right I'm like this is when the hardest did thing sometimes I didn't care about me I was waiting for I you. know I know and that's I'm like oh gosh I know. damned if you do damned if you don't so Look, it's true you know I've really struggled with that with that that concept like you know do you say to someone look you know I, I know you're going through a hard time they're like what do you know <laughs> Oh my god i don't know anything it's just you know you look i can feel it or i sense it <laughs> yes. and then you get your head bitten off it's like what do you mean or you know you get the defense they get really defensive so it's true it's true but i you know like that's it i've i found uh one thing that i found really challenging is um is when uh, I meet someone that's like me, you know, like that maybe they, they work as an energy healer or maybe they have the gift and they're a little too forward. So, you know, that sort of thing too, like as an acquaintance, they're not my friend, but perhaps they're sort of, you know, looking into things that maybe it, that's personal, you know, that, that is personal. And then there's another thing too, it's like when someone will ask you a question to challenge you and see if you're lying. And I'm just like, actually, that's my boundaries. So I'm not being rude. I just actually don't want to answer that question because I really think that that's none of your business. That yeah. also comes up too, you know? Yeah. And so I can seem quite hurt or quite rude or whatever, but it is like, actually, if you think about the question that you're asking, you know, <laughs> that it's not, we are not on, on that, that same page together. We haven't progressed from professional to acquaintanceship to, you know, to friendship, you know, and those, those variables of friendship, sometimes they do drop back to acquaintanceship and that, and, you know, and sometimes there's not that, um, there's still that bond, but maybe not that sharing anymore, you know, and this, and, you know, and I can become a bit unstuck on that too, but I generally find that, you know, I do, I prefer to, like you, be really aware of people's boundaries. And I also like people to respect mine, you know? Yeah. Well, I think it all comes down to trust at the end of the day. The more that you really trust someone to, you know, respect you or to, you know, not share all your stuff or just that, that element of trust can really yeah. help with that, bringing yeah. those walls down. There's nothing um, nicer than hearing that, you know, when you've shared with someone and then it's sort of like, oh, yeah, they said that you weren't having a good time. And I'm just like, I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, you know, that's even like in family and things like that as well. You know, it's not uncommon, you know, that, Alison, you know. So the other thing I wanted to ask you about, and I know it's been really important for me when it comes to boundaries, is learning to say yes when I mean yes and no when I no mean no. And what I realised over the years is that sometimes it's not other people overstepping our boundaries that's the most painful thing. It's when we overstep our own heart or body or soul's boundaries and constantly say yes to things when we mean no, um, it's violating our own personal boundaries that has, that has been something that I've had to really look at. Is that something that you've had to look at? Yeah, I've really, I've really understood the concept of taking responsibility for that because not only through words, the words of yes and no, it's also like my own behaviour. So, you know, um, we're, you know, we can show people how we communicate and what we expect in our lives, not only through uh, the spoken word, it's also through what we do and how we do it. You know, this, you know, whether we're oversharing or undersharing, you know, boundaries, boundaries, uh, we're showing people all of the time what our boundaries are through our actions. And sometimes, you know, that does need to be reined in. And so I, I, when I became more aware of it, you know, I even started using like phrases, you know, like if someone would ask me something, I'd just say, look, okay, what I'll do is I'll come back to you on that because I really had to understand that, um, you know, and how to do that. And I had to do it slowly because I could really feel it. Like it was like mm. a pit in my stomach because I was so used yeah. to saying yes all the time or just, you know, going with whatever was needed for everybody, you know, to make everyone happy. But in fact, in the end, no one was happy. So... Yeah, well, well that's, that's right. Learn, learning my learning my own limitations has been massive. You know, I kind of grew up feeling like 
you know, my mum was someone who just pushed herself so far all the time to the detriment of her own health and happiness and well-being sometimes. And, and yes, there was a lot of underlying survival stuff there. You just, you know, you feel like if I don't do it, no one else is going to do it. And I definitely have a lot of that role modeling and patterning in me. I, and I, and a lot of my clients that I hear as well, they like, well, if I don't do it, who's going to do it? So they feel that they have really no choice or lack of boundaries. But the truth is, is that even I think when I became a mum, I think for many women, that's when it kind of kicks up a whole new level. When we now have responsibility of a whole child, a whole being 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you know, we go into that self-sacrifice that everything we do is you know for that child it's like if the child wakes up every two hours or you know you just constantly have you know your boundaries are being um you know pushed and things like that so even your lack of sleep or your lack of you know feet health like um feeding yourself healthy or all these things can really get tested i think especially when you become you know a mum <laughs> And then you've got to rein it back in and you've got to remember, I'm not a machine, you know, I'm actually human too. And I need to value some healthier boundaries. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I, uh, my whole perspective on my relationship changed, you know, when um, my oldest girl was born and I can tell you right now, I just thought to myself, you know, as much as I, and you know, let, let's be honest here, as much as I loved my father, he wasn't a great dad. And, and I knew that it was lining up to be another not great dad. And I made decisions based on, you know, the welfare and the well-being of not only myself, but, you know, but of my children. Yeah. And these, but yeah, so when you're talking about, you know, being a mother, like this, this is something that's really like, I didn't understand that at the time. It's only now looking back that I realised that those decisions that I made, they were really tough decisions, but they were basically saying, I may not be able to, you know, I may not be able to break out of this, but certainly, you know, I'm not going to let my girls go through this as well. And this, I want them to have this sense of understanding and sense of love and just to be, you know, the best that they can be. These decisions, you know, I made them at the time and, and I've, you know, and you have to live with those sort of things and maybe they're not the right thing or whatever, but they were actually about boundaries, which is actually like love and self-love and it's appreciation for yourself. So, yeah, I had to have, you know, I had to, to uh, you know, have my firstborn, Bianca, to really understand what that meant. And that's, that would be the same for any parent, you know, whether they've given birth or whether they're um, an auntie, a caregiver, whether they're, um, you know, husband, father, it doesn't really matter. It, you, there is that, there, I believe that there is uh, something about that that changes. And so you start to, to see uh, you know, what's, what needs to be in that person's life. And it actually does start to apply in your own life as well. Yeah. So, so, so I know for me, um, even people that say they have loved me or care about me have not actually had the best boundaries with me. And it can be a very confusing, manipulating, muddy kind of thing that how can this person who says that they love me yeah. then still do this or treat me like this or don't respect me? It's, you know, it can be a really, you know, confusing, fusing time, especially when people say they love you. And so they're saying one thing but then doing another thing, um, trying to navigate your way through that can be sometimes really challenging, don't you think? Yeah. And let's, you know, let's be honest here, you know, like we are what we are and, and we are, you know, how we, you know, how we're brought up um, as, as other people that brought us up, you know, they are products of the people that brought them up, etc. So, you know, there's, there's that um, slow sense of change that goes on. And in all honesty, you know, like we, we, we attract what we know. And we have to navigate our way through that and, you know, and being clear about boundaries, you know, sometimes it gets to the point where, you know what, it's just like, I don't think it's in my best interest to be around this situation anymore or around this person, you know, I might just take a break from it. I might come back to it, but I might, might actually just take a break from it because you know what, I just, 
I don't feel great after these conversations, not with you, of yeah. course, you know, you're perfect, <laughs> but, but it is, it, there might be something there that just, it's, I can't put my finger on it, say, and I just think, you know what, um, that's, you know, I'm just going to, just going to leave this for a little while. You know, please, if you're my friend and you're listening, do know that they understand <laughs> that I do get busy <laughs> and things like that as well. So, like, hello, I still love you all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, like, yeah, so, you know, that's, um, you know, so when I, even like when I think, you know, back to certain relationships and that sort of thing, they only knew what they only knew and I only knew what I only knew. But it's up to me, you know, to decide if I wanted to stay there or stay there. Um, and you know, and and make the slow change or whatever. It, it's really it's individual, and there might just be some things like you know. Sometimes it's just a bit of gossip really just puts me on the knock, and I just think mm-hmm. I've actually sucked in myself back into that again. That person's not like that. It's just when we're together. That's enough. <laughs> we need a break. <laughs> like yeah, because it just is non productive. You walk away feeling a bit low or a bit flat or whatever, and so yeah, and that's, yeah. You know, boundaries, you know, within our earthly friendships and also boundaries, you know, within like, you know, with the spiritual realms and that. If you don't feel right, just, you know, I'm not going to do that for a while. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to go back to that group or when I tune in, I'm just going to make sure that this this being or this angelic being is actually an angelic being and is actually, you know, belongs with me. Yeah. You know? So these boundaries, you know, apply not only, you know, within our earthly lives, but also, you know, within our work and within our um, spiritual connection as well. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very important to, to, and I know that's one of my big, you know, lessons to hit, to, to, you know, learn this lifetime is self-love, to value self-love, self-care, to value my time, my energy, my life, my heart, my emotions you know, and that has helped me massively to be able to put healthier boundaries into place and to realise, you know, what lights me up, what drains my energy, what dulls me down and that it's really healthy for me to be surrounding myself or choosing things that expand my energy more and more because I know, especially when I'm working with clients, and I'm doing kinesiology or, you know, balancing their energy. So many of my clients come to me, they're not grounded, they're not even in their body, their energy field is so contracted because they have felt so contracted in their life or so many, you know, to feel so um, encroached on by everyone and they don't feel like they have a say in their life or they're afraid to speak up or they're afraid of what people will think of them they're afraid that people won't love them now they're afraid that people will hate them will leave them abandon them and so their actual boundaries their energy field is you know so small yeah. and and fractured know. it's it's there's a word for it my brother uses it's discombobulated and it just means you know <laughs> you're just sort of uh, not really <laughs> there and you might look like you're there and you might look all peaceful and calm and everything, but you know, inside, uh, if, if people were to see like what's inside of you, it's, it's not great. It feels really uncomfortable. Um, it, it can even like, um, physically be a little bit off kilter, a little bit sort of trippy, you know, with that sort of thing. When you, when you have this thing where you're, where you really do feel that you have no say, it's really mm. um, unsettling. Very and, un- and something that I've, I've really, had to step up a lot even last year is that a lot of little highly sensitive souls or people who I call earth angels who are really kind and sensitive we often don't like conflict we often don't like being really assertive or being aggressive or standing in our power so we we often turn a blind eye to things we you know try to just ignore it or just turn a blind eye to it But what actually can happen is that if we're not really protecting ourselves or standing up for ourselves or um, standing in our power, these negative people or these people who are trying to disempower us can still come into our energy field and attach to us or, you know, really wreak havoc with us anyway. 
Yeah. So it's really, it's really um, been a huge lesson for me as well this year to boundaries has been so important for, to also step in, stand in your power and to not be afraid of being assertive, speaking up, speaking your truth, even if that's going to, you know, cause a bit of conflict or people aren't going to like it. We can't just be so passive aggressive all the time. Yeah, because there's nothing worse than, uh, you know, worrying about making someone feel uncomfortable. You finally have that conversation, which, by the way, you don't have to use words that, that are confrontational. You know, you can do it. You can, you, you can find the language to use it so that it's actually not confrontational. And then you, f you find out that actually they feel the same way. <laughs> well, it's, 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 look, I'm not going to lie. No, but it's a relief for both of you. So, it, you know, it comes back to that. But I think what you're talking about is when you're in a situation and you feel that the earth term for it would be, you know, having the life sucked out of you. You know, you're drained, you're overtired, you can't think straight. And you know what? You just really just don't feel great. So exactly. that's or you can't actually, you know, be yourself around someone. You can't actually, you don't have, you're always having to like suck it up or sacrifice yourself or sweep things under the carpet and that just becomes so depleting and you know and it really can take a toll yeah so what so what did you do what was the start for you i had to i had to you know one of the one of the biggest things that one of the first books that i read was a doreen virtue book called assertiveness for earth angels and like when i read this book i was like Oh my goodness, this is so spot on for me. It's all about how do I be assertive with and without being like a pushover or passive aggressive? How do I be loving without being, you know, too nice or being taken advantage of? And so this is just like, you know, such a, a, a double edged sword all the time for me because. So many people who identify with, you know, I use the term earth angel or empath. We just don't like angry. We don't like nasty people. We will, you know, we don't want to be seen as a nasty people. We don't like rude people. We don't like, you know, uh, you know, arrogant people. <laughs> and so We tend not to go into society because, you know, generally we'll find them. <laughs> yeah. And so we can isolate ourselves so much. Or we can like, you know, it can really, we cannot live our life properly because we're afraid that we're going to have to have conversations with people or stand up for ourselves, you know? That's so I was like this, that, you know, that really first started to help me realize that being a good person or trying to do my best all the time or being nice doesn't mean that I have to, you know, never be, cross with someone or never get you know what be angry with someone so it's important to be able to you know express that somehow melissa help me <laughs> <laughs> well i i still don't like i'll admit i still really really don't like con um conflict or to yeah. have to be assertive and unfortunately that's where we can then tell ourselves a story and then we can make up all this story about things where it's just like just be honest, just have an honest conversation with people. But people don't like honesty sometimes. They would much rather live in this fake, fake world than actually speak, have an honest conversation about something. I think I'm still scarred from like high school where, you know, if I ever like when girls had a fight with a best friend and there's a big fallout at school and there's all this like drama. And I think that's literally still scarred me. And I know that's affected my daughters and I know it's affects, you know, other people I've talked to just remembering that, you know, drama. <laughs> Where is for me? The cat um, fight. <laughs> I know, but I'm just like, look, this doesn't suit me. You're out. <laughs> like, it can be. Oh, like, I wish I could oh, do that I've more now, friends. Mel. I've got things. It's like all or nothing. <laughs> I got friends. You're dead to me. <laughs> it's like you're dead to me. And they say, "Am I still in the circle?" Because <laughs> we laugh, and they just say, "You know, it's quite funny, actually." Like, and, and you know, and I don't. It, 
it's just that, you know, I think that maybe in the course of my life, there's been there maybe about four people, Laura, maybe six, <laughs> that I've just gone, <laughs> that is it, no more. And I don't entertain them. I, you know what? And I don't even hate them anymore because there's no point. And hate is a strong word, but it was just like whatever it was between the two of us, it's not suiting me. It's not suiting you. It's just not right. And you know what? I'm not going to go there anymore. Yeah. And, and it does like give me cause for self-reflection. You know, mm. it, it really, you know, because what's my part in it? How did it get there? Because, you know, as you know, I'm, I'm all about like that bit of responsibility. I like to know my rights, but I like to know my responsibility as well. You know, like, and, and, and sometimes that's pretty hard. Sometimes, you know, I see things and I just think, you know what, I really wasn't the best person there and I didn't do the right thing. And, um, you know, and we don't even need to go there anymore. Like, it's just, there's no point in apologising because it's just going to suck us both back in. It's just, that's it. And quite frankly, um, I hear, you know, after a while, you know, that, <laughs> that not only am I happy about it, but they are happy too. So, you know, I'm pretty honest about that. I'm a pretty, you know, um, pretty straight down the mark. And I, I like that, um, but I have learnt to be uh, a little kinder. See, so when I was in a position, you know, when I was like growing up and that, I really didn't have a voice, even though I could see, like, uh, and you know, and I had these abilities and that. Um, as a like as an everyday human, you know, I was really wasn't doing too well. I'll be honest there. Like, I didn't have those. Um, I didn't have an understanding of how things worked. You know, within the dynamics of a relationship or even some sort of connection, I didn't understand that. So it was only as I got older that that I learnt. You know, the the ways in which it is better to approach things. You know, and to, you know, give people space to, to understand that, you know, it, this is what the relationship is, you know, don't cross those boundaries, you know, so I was only, uh, initially I was thinking about it from their point of view, but then I started to apply that into my own life and even into my own work and things like that as well, you know, so yeah. it, it, it takes some time, but I did learn like how to, how to be kind um, in, in my language, you know, if I was not happy about someone, or something, you know, and also before I did that, I've actually learned to look at my own behaviour before I went in to do that because like a good little, <laughs> like the um, analytical mind that I am, I do want to see, you know, like are they going to come back with something? And look at and run? <laughs> I want to know the lay of the land. <laughs> That's how I look at it too. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Well, I know having um, two daughters myself, I really realised you know, years ago, I needed to be the best role model that I could be for them because I really didn't want my daughters to grow up being people pleasers or, you know, not being able to have healthy boundaries with people, respect themselves enough, value themselves to say, you know, yes, when you mean yes, or no, when you mean no, or, and to, and that, so that's, so that's something that as well has really fueled me to be able to learn desperately <laughs> how to practice healthy boundaries and to be a really, really good role model. <laughs> but also because I, I want to be able to surround myself with people as well who value and respect me and respect that I can say no when I'm, you know, and that's going to be okay. They're not going to get too wounded or too, you know, affected, they're going to be able to handle that, you know, so yeah, it's still, it's still, a, it's still a work in, in progress. And um. <laughs> that's something that's really important to, to say too. all of what I've found is all of the personal development, the, you know, the, the energetic healing and things like that, it is an ongoing thing, but it's not, it's not meant to be hard. It's just, it's not meant to be like, oh my God, that's a lesson, you know, like, oh, it was so hard and I'm going to, you know, throw myself down on the ground and disappear for weeks and, and not going, you know, not see anybody. It's not about that. It's just about on an everyday basis. You look at what is there in your life. You look at what's not working and, and you, and it's that consistency. You're not always going to get it right. But, but I've found, you know, like we can look at ourselves as broken, you know, and so we're con you know, we can be constantly looking at what's broken rather than constantly what's right. And I know if I look back even, you know, if I look back from when I was like 15 years old, then up to, you know, 
um, the more recent years, the, the boundaries have changed and, and my personal growth has changed. And that's a really important thing for people to understand that, you know, you're not always going to get stuff right. The boundaries are going to be fluid. You may need to, um, you may get tired and, and it may pop up again. You yeah. May, you may be overworked. And, um, and things might happen and you just might be having a bad day and the other person might be having a bad day as well. So, you know, boundaries Absolutely. also about understanding what's working right in those relationships and being able to come back to it and just say, you know what, not so much a boundary issue, but, you know, we were both a bit upset yesterday or I was, you know, a bit upset yesterday and, um, and I'm really sorry about that. And so, you know, because we don't want boundaries to be such that they're, that they're, Un, you know that they're unbreak like unbreakable mm. that that point that I've set there isn't fluid you know it doesn't allow for apology or for you know for realizations and and spirit which personal growth is spiritual growth so you know um so for me that's a really important thing because um yeah it's you know when we work on stuff sometimes we'll need you know the energetic healing component brought in sometimes we need to hear messages from our guides and our angels you know to help us through and to help us have those realizations but on the whole you know, we will slowly get used to doing that for ourselves and for seeing where we are along our path, you know. And um, But boundaries have a, a huge role to play in that. And I find that whatever I discuss or talk about boundaries will generally come up within that. Yeah. Mm. So but what's the best yeah. phrase? What's the best phrase you've ever had to use or that you've ever had to practice? <laughs> um when well when when people are asking you things or yeah. like i'm yeah. just like oh just just maybe check my diary or i've just gotta i'll just have to go home and check with my husband what we're doing that day and when i you know when i someone told me i should practice these kind of phrases years ago i was like what you can actually say that are you kidding me like I was like, how come I know I missed this memo at school or, you know, it's like no one actually told me that I could actually go and think about it or go and check in to see if that was actually doable. You know, I would always just drop everything, you know, say yes, yes, all right, you know. Um, yes. What about you? Um, I've learnt, uh, I suppose more recently what I've learnt um, and I learned this through a, like a workshop talk that I went to a few years ago. And the woman there, she said, look, she said, people get to know this about me. She said, but at, at six o'clock every night, she said, I'd turn my phone off. She said, if I was married, um, she said, I would, I'd put it on to do not disturb and own, um, and in the smartphone, it would be, you know, only say my husband or, or my partner. She said that could come through on that because she said that would be an emergency thing. But she said, I'm not. So she said, I turn my phone off at 6 p.m. every night and that means my work is done for the day. So she's talking about, you know, um, even talking on the phone for a couple of hours at night and things like that. But this was her personal time. And she mm. said, and I turn it on at 8 a.m. the next morning after I've been and done my exercise. I've written in my journal. She has a meditation practice and things like that as well. So her thing was, was that if she was really well, um, through having the right sleep, food, um, and quiet time to herself where she could actually just be herself. She felt that she could show up between the hours of 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. every day and do it well. And she'd been doing it for a few years by this date, and she, she said that she felt and looked really well. So those, with, that, with regards to that, that's like a boundary that you would show somebody and people would get used to. Um, I do like that. I like that mm. a lot. I have, um, and there are times when I will turn my phone off because now these phones are with us all the time, right? Yeah. So, but I will turn my phone off or put it on do not disturb. And I always say to people when I give my number to them, if I don't answer or if it goes to voicemail, please leave a message because you know what? I have a lot of downtime or I have something come through that I'm working on or I'm thinking about and I don't want any interruptions. I love you and I want to know you, but please understand this about me. And so that, you know, that has actually been really helpful because, you know what, these phones are with us all the time, but it doesn't mean that, that we should be accessible all the time. That's how Absolutely. I look at it. Well. So that for me was, you know, one of the... I love that. I love that. That's really, really... Yeah. That's really good. You like that? I still love you, Alison. I'll still respond <laughs> to your calls. 
<laughs> See, when you say that, it's like, oh, cool. Like, yay, Melissa does that. So, mm. Oh, maybe I can do that too. And yeah, that feels really, really, really nice. We have just, you know, the world has changed so much where there's shops open 24 seven, there's news and TV, everything, internet, you know, it does, does really encroach on our lives a lot if we well, yeah you know. if we if we don't pay attention to it it can yeah it can it really can so i mean even last week as you know i went away for for that retreat but before i went to it you know i was guided to on airbnb go to this particular property and i thought oh this is so beautiful it was like and i was like are you sure you know it's, it's kind of a remote property or whatever but the thing is for me to you know that internet connection and phone connection i had to go into the paddock it's a beautiful property mm -hmm. so that actually helped me to realize like even though i'm still pretty careful that you know like it creeps up mm. and the mind's going all the time and thinking about things and that and i just needed a good break that was it absolutely yeah. I'm not an advocate for, you know, for totally dropping things, dropping out of things in this world. You know, I love this world. I love that. I love that I have that technology, but I do, I'm the one that's responsible for that and for setting those boundaries. It's the same like I, I didn't know about like the phrases um, that we could use, you know, in order to, or, you know, to say, look, I'm going to come back to you. I'm going to ask my husband about that. Or, uh, you know, I want to, I, I'm just want to do a little bit more research on that and I'll come back to you. That's it. I don't say, do you mind if I come back to you? I say, I will come back to you because I don't want it to be a question. I did learn, I did learn that. I got myself into some real pickles. <laughs> so, you know. Don't give people too many choices and options. <laughs> no, no, I had to, again, they're the things, you know, that, that we slowly learn over time. But, you know, they do work and, and just, you know, because it's about what's right for me. The same as what's right for you is what's right for you. That's it. You know. And I'm telling you, you know, at one time or another in your life, you know, if you don't, you're going to be asked to learn this stuff. You know, it's that mind, body, spirit connection. You're either going, it's either going to be showing up in your life somehow, whether your body is trying to get your attention through illness or headaches or back pain or digestive issues. You know, your body is always speaking to you, whether it's tired, depleted, you know, and it's really important to start to learn to listen to that. And if things aren't working out in your life so well, that's really important, as you know, to spend that time connecting in because so many of us can be, like me included, we're so plugged into everybody else but we're really never don't have that much time plugged into ourselves. We're always giving and not receiving. So the more I practice a daily recovery program from the disease to please. Yes, I am an addict. <laughs> it is a daily recovery program because it can creep up in so many little, little ways. And I can, if I'm not kind of staying really plugged into me, and listening to my spirit and my body and my soul. So that helps me stay in check all the time. Yes. So, yeah. You're more disciplined than I am. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, a, that's something else, you know, that, that people need to know. It doesn't really matter. Just sometimes, you know, it can get away from us. We realise it and we attend to it. That's it. It's not a, there's not an examination. There's no uh, pass mark on it. It's just doing the best you can. And that's all there is to do, you know. Well, that's it. Yeah. Well, there you go. Well, that was really, really great. Well, that was really great. So thank you, Alison. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in again. We really appreciate it. And we love your questions and we love your feedback because, like Alison said, you know, it's really encouraging and it's really good. And we do have these conversations. We always have. And so, you know, we're, we're happy to share them with you. So if there's anything that you want to know about and, and you can be quite particular, then, you know, you can messenger or text or email one of us. And those details will be in the show notes, etc. And you'll find them very, very easily. Yeah. So thank you again. All right. Lots of love. Bye. 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 
Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Sacred Sessions. Your comments, questions and topic suggestions are welcome. So connect with us on Facebook and Instagram and through our websites. Naturally, all links are in the show notes.